through our lives and by our prayers your kingdom come through our lives and by our prayers your kingdom come through O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. I will meditate on all your acts and ponder on your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who works wonders and have declared your power among the, prof among the peoples. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Good evening. Good evening to those that have already said good evening and welcome uh, to evening prayers. The end of a strange week. Uh, we'll get to that, I think, in the prayers, because I think at the moment it feels like we need all the prayers we can get. And then we see the glimmers of hope in a number of other happenings in our country and in the medical and scientific world. Meanwhile, welcome. We've managed another week. And we're able to come together in worship and praise and prayer. So it is good to, to welcome you. It is good to feel part of this community and uh, to take up my normal evening, uh, Friday evening slot. Uh, we give thanks to God that we are able to do this. And we give thanks that we have the technology and the will and the, the, the well-being to do these things. We begin with Psalm 86. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. Keep watch over my life, for I am faithful. Save your servant, for I put my trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, and great is your love toward all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the time of trouble I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, nor anything like your works. All nations you have made will come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, you do wondrous things, and you alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you, that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name for evermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is from Joel 2, uh, 2, 28 to 3, 8. It starts with a well-known piece of poetry and continues with powerful images of both restoration and retribution. It's kind of <laughs> the Old Testament journey we've begun uh, to be so familiar with and, and typically revisit again. So let us listen for the word of God in scripture. Then afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves in those days, I will pour out my spirit. I will show portents in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. 
The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape, as the Lord has said, and among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. For then in those days and at that time when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there, on account of my people and my heritage Israel, because they have scattered them among the nations. They have divided my land and cast lots for my people, and traded boys for prostitutes and sold girls for wine and drunk it down. What are you to me, O Tyre and Sidon, and all the regions of Philistia, are you paying me back for something? If you are paying me back, I will turn your deeds back upon your own heads, swiftly and speedily. For you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried my rich treasures into your temples. You have sold the people of Judah and Jerusalem to the Greeks, removing them far from their own border. But now I will rouse them to leave the places to which you have sold them, and I will turn your deeds back upon your own heads. I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the people of Judah, and they will sell them to the Sabaeans, to a nation far away, for the Lord has spoken. In this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Old Testament song, as is usual on a Friday evening, is a song of humility from Hosea 6, 1 to 6. Come, let us return to the Lord who has torn us and will heal us. God has stricken us and will bind our wounds. After two days, he will revive us and on the third day will raise us up that we may live in his presence. Let us humble ourselves, let us strive to know our God, whose justice dawns like the morning star, its dawning is as sure as the sunrise. God's justice will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. O Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O Jacob? Your love for me is like the morning mist, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore, therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For loyalty is my desire, and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our Gospel reading this evening is from Luke 16, 1-9. It leaves us with a big question in the last verse. Then Jesus said to the disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, what is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, what will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig and I'm ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, how much do you owe my master? He answered, a hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 50. Then he asked another, how much do you owe? He replied, a hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. In this, 
is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading from Joel contained those wondrous words that we hear echoed in the New Testament. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy and your old men, old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. We hear these wondrous words of creativity and possibility. And then we hear what sounds like a text exhorting justice. And what we get from this is a reminder that we can't just take texts and extrapolate them and, and, and just apply them. It reminds us that the Bible is not a textbook. It is a narrative. It is a journeying of God's people, understanding God, getting closer to God, becoming more like God wants them to be, understanding more of God's kingdom and justice. In the gospel story from Luke, one of the suggestions is that the, um, is that the manager doesn't act as dishonestly as we might imagine, because there was the possibility that when, um, when he demands a hundred, uh, a hundred containers of wheat that has got built in interest and so all the dishonest manager is doing is taking off the interest which means his manager his boss doesn't in real terms lose anything i don't know i didn't live we don't really know it also says that uh at um when it says the man master can commended the dishonest manager because he'd acted shrewdly. That was the original ending of the parable. The thing we have to keep with us is that the stories we read have often been changed and added to and altered and used for a specific purpose. We can't just pick up, as I said, and just extrapolate the facts. Storytelling and narratives and the words that God has given us through all of the writers of the Bible need to be listened to and reflected on and lived. These stories chime with our stories and in these stories are truths and glimpses of God and blessings and messages of hope and love and warning so one of the one of the best things that i learned uh, when i was studying was don't ask did it happen ask what's its meaning what's its purpose why is that there and what has that got to say to me where I find myself because we might read a story one day and get a specific meaning or a specific understanding and two three four weeks years months later we read it again and because we are changed the text is changed may God bless us as we listen and reflect and learn from these stories our New Testament song is from 1 Peter 2. Christ suffered for you, leaving you as an example, that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in turn. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he trusted in God who judges justly. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of our souls. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. We come to our time of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God and Father, come and dispel the darkness from our hearts, that in the radiance of your brightness we may know you the one and fading light, glorious in all eternity. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in our crucified Redeemer, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We come to our words of thanksgiving and the biggest thanksgiving we have tonight has already been scrolling up on the screen as we give thanks for the birthday of Alfie. He's been through so much and his family have been through so much and so to have this possibility of celebrating his birthday, albeit in a lockdown strange way, albeit in hospital, but we give thanks for his birthday. Uh, and we give thanks for uh, the the care that he is receiving and the blessing that his family is to each other. Loving God, we give you thanks. We come giving thanks for another week, another week of possibilities and opportunities, a week of sunshine and walks, a week of hard work, a week of friendships, rekindled and nourished through outside activities, through Zoom meetings, through phone calls, through text messages. We give you thanks that we can meet together as a community, that we can find support and love, that we can find a sense of belonging and that we can mark this time each day in your presence. We give you thanks for the day that has gone and for the night ahead, may we find rest and refreshment. And may this weekend we find blessing and light and love in relationships, in nature, and in the words that we share, both in reading and in hearing. Amen. We come to our prayers of intercession and I think uh, there's there's a few things politically that I would like to draw attention to. Um, we we've heard the continuing protestations of of Trump and uh, and all of those who say that the election was illegal or had all sorts of things. But we also hear today a ruling that this was the most secure election in history, and we pray that those who are speaking in God's name. Start to question some of the things they're saying. Understanding that we worship and we believe in a God of love, not a God of division, not a God of hate, not a God of protests in the streets and exclusion and discrimination and prejudice. We worship a God of love. And we have heard the news of Dominic Cummings moving on and the changes that this will inevitably bring for uh, the government. And we pray for the government at this time and we pray that there will be a unity that has obviously been missing. So let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we complete our evening sacrifice of praise. For the unity and peace of the Holy Church of God throughout the world, we pray. For all communities of faith, we pray. And we think tomorrow of our friends, of our Hindu and Sikh friends who are celebrating the festival of Diwali, the festival of light in the darkness. And we pray that they may find blessing in their celebrations. We pray to the Lord for the peace and stability of all peoples and for those in authority. We think of the governments in this country and in, the, in America, for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, as they begin some of their restoration work, facing the difficulties and retributions that they are facing. Loving God, we pray for peace, for wisdom, and for calm. We pray to the Lord. We pray for a blessing on our homes and our relationships and friends and all whom we love. And tonight in the UK, 
We pray for the Children in Need Charity Appeal. We give thanks for Joe Wicks, the PE teacher of the country, who did 24 hours of PE. And we give thanks that he raised over one and a half million pounds in that 24 hours. Lord, even in this time of lockdown, even in the time of austerity and difficulty for so many families, we see altruistic and kind and generous people coming together. For this we pray to the Lord. For the sick and the suffering and for all who minister to their needs, we give thanks for the vaccine progress and all the positive and hopeful things that will come out of that for treatment of COVID-19. We give thanks as we read that the R number is falling. And we hold before God now Alfie, who many of us have never met, but who we regard as our friend. And we pray with Celia for Alfie, recovering from his latest surgery. And we pray for his mum and his dad and his sister as they celebrate his birthday. We pray with Alison and Paul for James, with Andy for Karen and Liz, for Hatra, for Mohammed, Mohanid Reza, Isla Rose and those in Iran wrestling with Covid. We pray with Onkatea for Sarah and for herself. We think of the Reverend Michael Pevy and his wife June, for Bill and Janet and we pray for and give thanks for our moderator and all the East Midlands Synod staff, both paid and voluntary, for all those who serve through the life of the Synod. And this evening we give thanks for the congregations of the East Midlands Synod, particularly the churches of Milton Keynes. And we hold before God in a moment of quiet, the things that we carry with us. We pray to the Lord for all who sleep in Christ, that Christ will remember them in his kingdom. We read of the continuing thanks for the life of Jonathan Sachs, that well-known and wise rabbi. And we pray for the victims of the Yorkshire Ripper and their families, following particularly the police apology that was offered today, the burden those families carry. We pray for them in their continuing grief and we pray that they may find peace and some closure. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, we commend our whole life into the hands of God and say together we're using the words that most work for us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who, who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May God bless us as we go on into the evening. May we find rest and may tomorrow be a good day. Go well. Amen.